After a run on the West Coast, the cream is starting to rise to the top with Stadium Championship Series Green. We invaded Petco Park in San Diego. Three competitions, three different winners. But at the end of the night, it was Ryan Anderson and son of a digger winning his third straight event championship. The lead remains with Neil Elliott and Max D, but in the words of Will Smith, we're going to Miami. Welcome to Miami. It's Stadium Championship Series Green, and this is Monster Jam. This is Monster Jam. I'm Scott Jordan alongside Great Clips Mohawk Warriors Bryce Kenny and Leslie Mears. Tonight we're at Marlins Park with Stadium Championship Series Green, where three of the top ten ranked drivers in the power rankings will compete. We've got number one Neil Elliott and Max D, number four Morgan Kane, a grave digger, and number eight Ryan Anderson and son of a digger. Bryce, he's on a hot streak with three consecutive event championships. Well, Ryan's at the top of his game right now. He's really found a bit of a groove on this tour. I'm so excited to see what he has for us tonight. Let's take a look at the series point standings. The current season point standings for Stadium Championship Series Green, Neil Elliott, Max D maintaining that series points lead. You look at Morgan Kane in second, Ryan Anderson in third. So three straight event championships, a five point deduction last week in San Diego. You still win three straight, you still sit in third. That shows you the consistency between Morgan and Neil. Well, they're doing a great job of competing on every single competition, but don't count out Corey Rummel. He has a few tricks up his sleeve as well. For more on this series, let's go down to the track with Leslie Mears. So Morgan came, came into the weekend with a fresh mindset, and it's really paid off for him here tonight. He is currently tied at 26 points with Neil Elliott and Max D, and that's the guy he's got to gain the most ground on. We saw him really go out of his comfort zone in skills challenge with that popper that he hardly ever pulls off, and he says he's got even more tricks up his sleeve for freestyle. However, I think that there's going to be a dark horse rise from the depths of the sea, and that's going to be Corey Rummel in Megalodon. He's been so close to that freestyle victory this season. I think tonight is his night. Matt Pagliarulo, driver of the Jester Monster Jam truck. Nick Pagliarulo, driver of the Kraken Monster Jam truck. And welcome oh, to the, the Team Top Foolery Motorsport <laughs> Shop. <laughs> to be a mom and a crew chief, it's a lot to juggle, but I enjoy every moment of it. It gives me an opportunity to spend time with my family and have some of that one-on-one -on -one time, especially being the crew chief, so I enjoy it. We get to, you know, be as a family together, and that is the most important thing with us is we're all together with a family, and that definitely at least cheers us up, and you know, either when we get down or we have all these great highs, like my dad winning the overall event championship in Tampa, or me winning the Rookie of the Year, or us trying to get to the World Finals, or just anything in between, you know, it, it definitely brings us up and always makes us feel good from week to week. Everybody in this team is integral to how we operate. Without one of us, it doesn't run very smooth. So we all have our individual parts and we all back each other up and that's that's team and you know that's the best part of us. This this one right here, she is the glue that keeps the hot mess express on the tracks. Very busy, but I love it. I love every minute. All right, later on tonight, we will head back to Sanford, Florida. Team Tom Fullery Motorsports. Right now is the 2019 Co-Rookie of the Year, Nick Pagliarulo in Jester. Leslie, you had a chance to talk to Nick a little bit earlier tonight. So Nick Pagliarulo thinks this is the weekend that he's going to take home the freestyle victory. He says he's going to stop worrying about the little things. You know, he was kind of worried about, you know, hurting the body on the truck and, you know, worrying about making sure that everything was in check. But this weekend, it's all out the window. He's feeling very, very confident in the truck, and he feels like he's got the backflip down. He knows exactly at what speed he needs to hit it so he can land it perfect and keep on rolling. One thing I like about Nick is that the amount of work that he puts in on a weekly basis, he gets better and better. He's starting to get the hang of the Great Clip Skills Challenge, and in his freestyle runs, you're beginning to see those technical moves come into play. If you can put it all together, watch out for the 2019 Co-Rookie of the Year. Well, and to your point, he understands how to manage the run overall. He understands when to turn up the volume, and sometimes he might make the wrong gamble, but a most of the time, in true Pagliarulo fashion, he makes the right gamble. And so. 
If you notice the dirt, though, it's, it's pretty nice tonight. I mean, we did have a little bit of rain earlier before they were able to close the roof here at Marlins Park, and you can kind of see some of that moisture in the dirt, but it's really loose on top, but there's still plenty of tackiness below that top level from what I can tell so far, which gives a lot of acceleration, gives a lot of control to the driver overall. And getting to that, the roof is partially open. It started spitting the rain into Marlins Park, started to lay down on the track. So is that a decision that needs to be made for the, the trucks, for the drivers, or, or is it something where you can just let the roof stay open and, and let it rain down on Miami? Well, I'm glad they could go ahead and close that because that would have made a huge issue for the drivers overall. would have changed the whole dynamic. You see, obviously, Nick is having some trouble out of that, that uh, back left tire and, and, and is probably going to end his run a little bit earlier than he had planned. But you notice he was getting a lot of attitude and a lot of throttle. But th look at this. This is what you want to see. It doesn't end his run. He comes out there. He makes something out of a bad situation, throws it into a donut. That's, a, that's about all you can do in that kind of scenario. So the backflip will have to wait for Nick Pagliarulo in crack and not a bad score. Not as much as he wanted to. Got some good air. There's a little bicycle save into a stoppy for Kraken. And here is the donut. As you said, something out of nothing. Three tires. What are you going to do? How about you come out and fill the clock with a donut? Next up, we got Roy Pridgen in Exterminator. Leslie Mears, what you got on Roy? Well, guys, it was a rough week for the Exterminator team. And so they drove all the way from San Diego, California to Deland, Florida. And they got to the shop, got everything ready to load up at 2 a.m. on Friday morning coming down here to Miami for the weekend. Well, as they tried to fire the truck up to get it in the trailer, they realized they had a blown head gasket. To ensure that they made it for practice, they still loaded up and made the five-hour drive down here. But then once they got here, it took them another four to five hours to swap out the engines to make sure that they get ready for action tonight. All right, so we'll Talk about that, Bryce. You get to get on a plane after the end of the event. It's oh, Roy no, Pritchard boy. trying to save it here. He had the one wheel, thought maybe he could pull it out, but just gets too wide on the turn and rolls Exterminator. So maybe the long trip and the mileage adding up for Roy Pridgen and Exterminator. Well, I think that just lower level of dirt it just kind of bit him a little bit too much. And I, I do think it's tackier than what the drivers were originally thinking in those corners. They're going to have to be careful. We got a long way to go tonight from Marlins Park. The Monster Jam Racing Recap is coming up next on Monster Jam. Welcome back to Monster Jam at Marlins Park in Miami. Stadium Championship Series Green. The top of the standings, Neil Elliott Max D seems to be putting some distance between himself and the rest of the field. Somebody had to make a move, and earlier tonight that move was made by Gravedigger's Morgan Kane with a racing win. Well, this was our first chance to really see how this dirt was going to respond to these big giant BKT tires, and Morgan Kane is one of the best in the business at adapting to different dirt styles. Right here, you can kind of tell in round one, he's staying really tight to those turn piles, getting around the track very effectively and of course in round one able to take that win and that would be the 18th win of the season for Morgan Kane a grave digger the most in this series and he would move on to round number two where he would line up against Nick Pagliarulo in crack and so the right lane for grave digger close off the line to each other that first turn the difference look at Morgan Kane drifting around throttle acceleration and here's where he would pick it up well Nick was actually ahead of him he beat Morgan Kane off the starting line Nick going in this final turn just cuts it a little bit too tight and Morgan was able to capitalize 19.477 for Morgan Cade and Gravedigger. We start with 14. We get to the final four, and here is your first semifinal matchup. These two going at it all season long. Neil off the line faster. Morgan Cade, Gravedigger playing catch up. Well, this was a point, too, where I started to look and say, maybe Morgan's having some issues with that truck just because you saw it not accelerating off the line as quickly as, as Neil's truck was. Neil was bobbling about every single turn, which is very unlike Neil, so he might be having some steering issues out of that Max D machine. But regardless, Neil L.A. makes it to the semifinals. That's why it's going to be tough to beat him. You got to chip away one point at a time. So Morgan Kane, Grave Digger, would advance to the final round against Corey Rummel and Megalodon. These two met earlier in Anaheim, where Morgan got the win in Grave Digger. So one final matchup for the first 14 points of the night. Morgan Kane second in the point standings. Corey Rummel fourth, trying to gain some ground on Max D. And what a race this would be. Off the line they go. Megalodon with a nose on Grave 
grave digger as they go around that first turn in this figure eight track. Well, notice how deep Morgan Kane goes in the finals, and I think that instead of staying tight to the turn piles, he wanted to get a little bit more ground speed, a little bit more wheel speed, and it paid off for him in the finals. You see Corey kind of bobble that final turn, but congratulations to Morgan Kane, 19.645 in that final round. He was one of the most consistent drivers in racing all night long in his show. The only time Morgan Kane has lost in a racing final in 2020, it's all been to Ryan Anderson, 0-3 against Ryan Anderson, 3-0 against everyone else. So the first 14 points of the night would go to Morgan Kane, Neil Elliott getting 12, Ryan Anderson getting 11, of course, Corey Rummel in second, he would get 13. So the top four in the standings are your top four in racing. Let's hear from our racing winner, Morgan Kane in Gravedigger. So Morgan, after a couple lackluster weekends where you feel like you weren't really in your groove, you know, is this you running your own race this weekend, taking this racing win tonight? Absolutely. I got to make sure that I give a shout out to Parker, my crew chief right here. We've been together since the beginning. We went to kindergarten together. This guy keeps me straight. He told me last week in San Diego, he's like, look, man, we're in this slump. You got to get out of it. Dig yourself out of that grave and get back on top. And that's what we just did tonight. This is what it's about, Miami. We love every single one of you guys, and I want to drive this truck even harder. All these competitions we're about to do, you better be on your feet because we're about to burn it down. Jimmy Creighton really mixed it up tonight during Skills Challenge, but it comes at a cost to the team. And as you can see, feverishly working here, trying to get both outer axles out and new ones in on the truck to try to make it back for freestyle. Great crew back there working for Jimmy Creighton to Extreme Racing. He is good to go. We are back live now inside Marlins Park. This is Monster Jam Freestyle and the 2005 World Finals Freestyle Champion has had a rough start to his year after winning the World Finals racing title in 2019, but he got his first racing win a week ago in San Diego. Well, he's starting off his freestyle run really well. He's got so much power in that Bounty Hunter truck, and he's using all of it. Getting some big air right off the start, and uh, trying to, obviously, starting to kind of cross-thread it uh, as well. Jimmy's somebody that at, at one point can kind of bring out that carnage, right? He can go and hit a, a, a jump and go big, and then go straight into a technical move, and that variety is always popular with the Monster Jam fans. Jimmy Creed and Bounty Hunter hoping for the opportunity to defend his World Finals racing title in Orlando at Camping World Stadium May 2nd and May 3rd. We would love for you to be there with a slap really and Bounty Hunter. Get your tickets right now at monsterjam.com all weekend long. World Finals will take over Orlando in May. Jimmy Creighton, Bounty Hunter, had an epic event at World Finals last year. Can he do it again this year? A stadium championship series win would go a long way, but the slap of this truck built for that as he continues to come down. I feel like every jump he makes, the truck just automatically gets that slap wheelie on it. Well, he's having some trouble, though, out of the front end of that Bounty Hunter truck. You can kind of notice that the rear tires are, are accelerating, but the front tires are not. And it looks like he's going for a, a, a backflip here, which is he's a big game. up, Bryce, as he gets it, landing uh, it quite short off that. Just did not get the acceleration off the backflip ramp. And that is going to do it for Jimmy Creighton's run. I think it was the issue with the front end, though. And maybe he could have felt that a little bit and figured that something wasn't quite right. Obviously, he, he heard a couple axles in the Great Clip Skills Challenge, and maybe it just plagued him. But obviously, that caused the, the Bounty Hunter truck to not quite get the pop off of that container that he's going to need to rotate the backflip. Moving on now to Kristen Hope in Wolf's Head, representing Raisin Cane Monster Trucks. Teammate Roy Pridgen and Extermigator, they are out of Deland, Florida. Jared McNeil, quite an arsenal of drivers and trucks competing in Monster Jam. Kristen Hope now in her first ever stadium championship series. Well, Kristen is somebody that every single weekend, it seems like she continues to find her groove in that Wolf's Head truck. And it looks like she might have tried to grab a stopping there, but uh, she, she's somebody that you can tell a nice donut, throwing a donut right into the middle of the freestyle run. The fans love to see that. But I can tell that the truck is landing the way that she wants it to, to land. You can kind of see her getting a lot of momentum, plenty of throttle, plenty of attitude at the beginning of the run. She just needs to capitalize on it now and kind of find that wow moment the fans are looking for. 
And we see a lot of drivers in Monster Jam, Bryce, taking, taking risks. Kristen Hope plays to her strengths, and I like seeing that with her. She knows what she is capable of, what the truck is capable of, and she is so good at it. That's why she fills the clock, and she continues to play to those strengths and do exactly what she needs to do. It's not going to be flashy. It's not going to be wild, but she will fill that clock, and she will give the fans a solid freestyle run. Well, now it Kind of on the opposite side of what Jimmy Creighton was dealing with out of his truck, it looks like Kristen, right now it looks like only the front tires have a lot of power. That back right tire is fighting against the truck. Nice donut though, again, those are the times when she probably felt a little bit of an issue in the back left tire. Maybe her crew came over the radio and told her something was going on and she pitched it into a donut. Again, you don't have to completely expire your freestyle run just because you have an issue and the best drivers in Monster Jam are the ones that can adapt to not just the track and what it throws to you, but what the truck is throwing at you. And Kristen did a great job there. Kristen Hope and Wolf's head, 6.826. You got some donuts in there, some air off the step up ramp. But again, as you mentioned, a, a lot of mechanical issues plaguing these drivers so far. Coming up, we're going to take you back to Tom Fullery Motorsports. Matt Pagliarulo and Jester is coming up next. <laughs> You'd be hard-pressed to find anybody that has anything bad to say about Jester's Matt Pagliarulo. We showed you earlier this evening a visit we had to Tom Fullery Motorsports in Sanford, Florida. So let's take you back with Inside Monster Jam. As we get prepared and ready to go to Miami, uh, it's a big two-show two weekend, uh, stadium show. So trucks need to be 110% because it's going to be a long weekend. It was a lifelong dream to actually build a monster truck and... Never thought it would happen. So in 2013, we started building the truck, crewing with some teams. All this is bu building momentum over two years. We get to Miami in 2015. It's our first ever Monster Jam show. First time I've ever driven in front of people. And it was, it was an unbelievable feeling to just be there after so many years of thinking about it and wanting to do it. And you know, we had, it was a rough weekend, I'm not gonna lie. So it was huge highs and huge lows all in the same weekend just like it is every week with running monster trucks. I mean, you have the highest of highs. A couple weeks ago, us taking the you know, overall event championship in Tampa, and then the next weekend, right in the middle of freestyle, we're the last truck to go out, and we blew a motor halfway through uh, freestyle, and it ended early. So, I mean, it, it's, it, it's a constant battle every week, week in and week out, and you know, it wouldn't be, if it was easy, everybody would do it. So, um, you know, we just, we just battle every week, and. You know, we just love doing it. So we started alluding to this earlier with Roy Prigent and Extermigator, but you know, the life of some of these drivers having to haul it all the way from San Diego to Miami, it's not an easy task. And to still be able to get in the seat and perform in front of thousands of people, it tells you how truly talented these drivers are. Well, and truly passionate they are as well. I mean, you've got to bring the passion if you're going to put yourself and your family through those physical demands. And speaking of physical demands, Matt Pagliarulo is starting off this freestyle run with some massive air, which the fans, of course, love to see. It was a magical weekend for him in Tampa. Week one in this series, taking home his first freestyle win and his first event championship since then. As he mentioned, the, the troubles have been a little bit insurmountable, but he's starting to put it back together in freestyle runs. He, he's capable of those big moments, those wow moments, the big air. He wants to win, and he especially wants to win in front of his home state crowd of Florida. Well, you can hear this throttle as well. He's got tons of throttle rhythm. Nice little bicycle there. Kind of saved it from going over on the roof. But a lot of throttle rhythm and a lot of ground speed. And I think that's where you get the control out of these trucks that a lot of people yeah, don't he's lining up for the backflip here. This is what won him the freestyle in Tampa. And he bounces off the front tires, oh, lands it on it. the rear. Reverse. And he is straight up. And he I is he looking should. for something here. He's just holding it there for the fans of Miami. Uh, did he shut off? No, it's still running. He's just oh, he's he's trying he's to walk posing. He's posing right now, Bryce. <laughs> oh, this is a this is a get out your phone Instagram moment for Matt Pagliarulo and Team Tom Fullery Motorsports, and he is back on the track. And this is the big jump you're looking for up the step up ramp. He goes with a sky wheelie and back down for Jester. Well, that was a ton of composure for him to let the truck kind of settle there. I thought the truck actually shut off for a second. It may have, but 
Big air right there off of the jammer. And, and Matt Pagliarulo not only knows how to get big air, but I've seen him do stuff in this Jester Monster Jam truck. You just can see that he has so much confidence at all these Major ramp faces. air on that jump, too. And look at the nose wheelie. Lands it on the nose, saves it again. He is putting together quite the run here. And he is so close to the wall, but they're going to let him pull himself out and get back on the track. Here comes Jester for one more go as the seconds tick away in the freestyle run up over the race ramp goes Matt Pagliarulo and a one wheel slap wheelie for Chester. That's a great run all over that ragged edge and out on the edge of out of control, but a 9.404, that's a great score. Puts them square into first place. That's going to be a tough score to beat the rest of the night. That is well above his freestyle average this year, so your new leader, Matt Pagliarulo in Chester. And a great look at that standing straight up trick. Not one you see very often after a backflip. And here comes Don Creighton and Scarlet Bandit. Well, Don looks like she's getting a good start to her freestyle run, hitting stuff pretty square, trying to feel out that track and feel out that Scarlet Bandit truck as well. But again, early, it almost looks like her truck might be fighting her a little bit. She doesn't seem to, to mind it. She's getting a great little slap really there. Some nice air, but we'll see if she, everything's 100% of that Scarlet Bandit truck. We're going to back around now for Scarlet Bandit coming this way. Trying to find another ramp. There we go, a little step up ramp for Dawn Creighton in Scarlet Bandit and the Sky Wheelie action. And now she's got some steering issues as well as you see the locked up rear wheels of Scarlet Bandit. Well, the, the front end, the tires, you can tell they're they're spinning independently from the throttle rhythm, if you notice. And so the, the back tires are spinning when she's under throttle. The, the front tires are just kind of following along. So when that happens again, it's hard to kind of beat the truck into submission because you need it to do what you want it to do. But right now, I think Dawn is subject to what that Scarlet Bandit truck is going to want to do the rest of this run. And this has become a pattern tonight. We're seeing this over and over and over again. So is it just bad luck for the drivers here in Miami or does the track have something to do with it? Why does everybody keep getting locked up? Well, that land right there that she had where she kind of came so hard down onto that front end, I think it just causes those front axles or maybe that front locker to finally let go. I mean, there's these trucks are 12,000 pounds. When you throw it 25 feet in the air, you can't guarantee that everything's going to stay together. And so, unfortunately, that ended her run. But I know Diesel Dave and Bro Camino, he just chomps at the bit to get out here and compete against these Monster Jam drivers. He's done a great job this season. I don't think anyone out there has more fun than Diesel Dave in a Monster Jam truck. And one thing you notice about the Diesel Brothers, they continue to get better and better week after week with both their uh, skills challenge performances and their freestyle runs. And, and Diesel Dave has come a long way. Heavy D had a, a long advantage over him by getting a rookie year in there, being co-rookie of the year. Diesel Dave only had six appearances behind the wheel coming into 2020. And every week he continues to thrive, including a couple weeks ago in Anaheim. He finished second freestyle with the run of his career so far. I love the air that Diesel Dave's been able to get so far in this start. And he just seems like, again, he's having so much fun out there. And it seems like he has fun in everything that he does. But uh, he's got a, a little bit of a slow ground speed going with this run, but a, a ton of air off of the ramps. And so I wonder if he's almost running this in first gear. I mean, it doesn't sound quite like first gear, but it looks like first gear to me. But one thing you can generally guarantee that you'll see from Bro Camino is a backflip unless you can't complete your freestyle run. And that's exactly what happens tonight with Diesel Dave and Bro Camino. So a disappointing end to his run. Wasn't able to get a dynamite save or the big air wow moment. Got a nice jump off the ramp. But Diesel Dave, Bro Camino has to settle for third place at the moment. And your BKT freestyle top five. Will the magic continue in Florida for Matt Pagliarulo and Jester? He is on top of your BKT freestyle leaderboard cracking right underneath of him bro camino bounty hunter and wolf's head your top five coming up we will go back to earlier this evening our second competition it's the great clip skills challenge recap for miami you're watching monster jam from marlins park in miami florida racing in the books 
And earlier tonight, the Great Clip Skills Challenge was also completed. And that man right there has won every single skills challenge he has competed in this season. The only one he hasn't won was when he blew a motor in St. Louis. And Bro Camino was able to take the victory tonight. Corey Romo and Megalodon finishes in fifth, getting a nice slap wheelie off the jump. Well, it was an excellent slap wheelie. And he held it as far as he could. He's aimed at that backflip container, of course. So he had to drop it down. But the other thing that Corey's got so good at are these poppers into a nose wheelie. And uh, it just couldn't quite quite grab it enough to moonwalk it back across the race base, but that's a really, really good place for him. Fifth place for Corey Rummel and Megalodon. Talk about how much improved Diesel Dave and Bro Camino continues to get as he pulls out the technical moves here in the Great Clip Skills Challenge. He would finish in fourth. A look at this bicycle as he gets right on the sidewall, spins it back around, and then a follow-up bicycle on the left-hand side as well. So a double combo move for Bro Camino and Morgan Kane and Grave Digger needed this one as well after the racing win, moonwalking it back up over the race pod. Well, this was a really, really cool moment for all of the fans, but also for Morgan Kane because he doesn't do a lot of of nose wheelies and he's getting to the point where he's saying gosh I'm tired of Neil Elliott winning all of these skills challenge we've got to come out here and do something different and he did it walking all the way across that race pod and going into a bicycle for his second attempt Try to get up over the jammer there is Grave Digger. We move on to Heavy D and Brodozer getting so good at this competition. Proof right here, the bicycle off the ramp and then into a stoppy. That is a great combo move and he's starting to perfect that. He is going to be trouble in this competition throughout Stadium Championship Series Green. Well, he has that turbo lag figured out. He understands how to keep the turbo up to, to pull off these moves, and that's incredibly difficult. But Neil Elliott, just he's got so many of these great clip skills challenge victories, a 9.429, putting it on the nose. And again, I think Neil Elliott could just park it on the nose or something and, and, and move into that Max D truck and live there as long as he wanted up with that back end high in the air because he, he's so good at it. He's done it so many times. I want to know what's next for Neil Elliott. How is he going to innovate this move into something new, into something different to keep those skills challenge wins coming? And this was his seventh win in the Great Clip Skills Challenge. Again, the only one he did not win, he was unable to compete in. That was in St. Louis on Sunday. So he has won seven of these more than anybody else in a Monster Jam Stadium Series price. If he keeps doing this, this could be the year Neil Elliott and Max D wins a World Finals Championship. Well, that's a huge victory for the Max D team because that's how they became tied with Morgan Kane heading into the freestyle competition. That puts a lot of pressure on both Morgan Kane and Neil Elliott to make sure that they're going to deliver in their freestyle runs. But a great victory again for Team Max D. And he continues to dominate this competition. So when you look at the greater scheme of things for the series championship, if he continues this run, he doesn't have to do much else other than stay consistent in the other two competitions. Let's hear from our winner, Neil Elliott, Max D. So Neil, you keep the streak alive here. You're now up to seven. You know, do you think there's anybody out here that can get close to you here in the skills challenge? You've just been so dominant. Oh, absolutely there is. You know, Morgan just went out there and he done that one off the top of that pod right there and it didn't even have a lip to kick it. I was super amazed that it even went up like that. And then he got it back up on top of the pod and down the other side and, you know, hats off to him. But this time, these Monster Jam fans gave me the win again. Back at it now to Monster Jam Freestyle, Kevin Crocker, El Toro Loco in his first stadium championship series as well. Another guy that has been consistent. I know we've said that word a lot, but you've got certain athletes on this series that do fill the clock. And again, they don't do the wow factor spectacular moves, but they, they maintain their balance. They stay upright and they get decent scores. And that's what Kevin Crocker has done. Well, so far, this truck looks like it's landing really well. That is going to give Kevin a ton of confidence to go a little bit bigger. I also really like Kevin's ground speed. Look how much attitude. He's taking advantage of the fact that the top level of that dirt is pretty loose. And then when he gets it turned around and lined up, he accelerates really, really hard. And he's very aggressive to get that big air. Hitting the acceleration once again. El Toro Loco now trying to get some air up over the freestyle pod. Not much there, so he will turn back around coming out of that turn wide. He's going to hit it again. The step up ramp, a little cross threading action again. Not getting the air. You got to wonder if there's some issues happening with the truck. He still hasn't really gotten too comfortable with this truck. It was his first time in it all the way back in Tampa in week one. So maybe some issues not being able to elevate as much as he would like to. Again, on the step up, a little bit of air there. So starting to improve in his freestyle run. 
I love the momentum. I love the throttle rhythm and the ground speed. But you're right. I mean, we want to see that big air. And there's some nice air there from, from Kevin. But but I do like the fact that he's getting a little bit of variety in his runs. He's hitting different faces that maybe some other drivers haven't been hitting. A 6.732, I think that's a little bit low for Kevin's run. Next up is our series points leader, Neil Elliott in Max D. I've talked about his racing before on this program. He consistently gets first round buys, making it to the semifinals. He dominates the Great Clip Skills Challenge. Freestyle has been his kryptonite. If he can put something together, he will run away with this series and head to Orlando at World Finals 21. Well, one of the things that I love watching Neil do, and he's one of the best in the business at it, is getting the truck turned back around and hitting the next jump. He's so fast at doing it, so much control. And earlier, we were able to catch up with Neil Elliott. You know, I've had good, solid freestyles. I haven't been breaking a lot of parts, so the crew guys are happy with me anyways. But, you know, I definitely started off the year better than what I'm doing now. And the problem is, is I can go out there and jump it and jump it and jump it, and it never really gets out of shape. It seems like the crookeder I jump it and the crookeder it lands, the better it sucks it up. So it's really, really hard to get to make look out of control. And I think that's what's really getting me down right now is not having that big wow moment. Racing in this series, five different drivers have won a freestyle competition. Neil Elliott is not one of them. That's hard to imagine. Look, but look how upset the truck is getting. He was just talking about trying to get it more upset in his freestyle run to, to try to not necessarily manufacture that wow moment in and of itself, but just put himself in the position for the wow look moment. The Some there. Massive air there, but you know, just like like Neil's saying, that truck is able to absorb just about anything Neil is able to throw at it. And that should give him a lot of confidence every time he gets the truck turned around to kind of keep rolling the dice so that he can go and, and, and get bigger air, get that, that big, huge wow moment the fans are looking for. And in our conversations, he has not been shy about his frustration with freestyle. He's had some dynamite runs as the backflip puts him now for Max D. Uh. And similar to Bounty Hunter, just not enough there on it. Well, he actually slowed down at the very last second as he was approaching that Monster Energy backflip ramp, and he just must have felt like he had too much speed going up to it, but obviously that rotation just did not quite work out for him because of that last-minute slowdown. The Rocksaur Recovery Team heading out on the Rocksaur Recovery Vehicle, a side-by-side -side unlike any other. For more information, go to rocksoaroffroad.com. We are not done yet with Monster Jam Freestyle. Another look at your BKT Freestyle Top 5. Jester still out in front with that top spot. Max D now unseating Kraken for that second spot. Nick Pagli Rulo falling to third. Bro Camino in fourth and Bounty Hunter in fifth. More freestyle is on the way. We want you to come on back. The Road to World Finals 21 is happening right now in Miami. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by Great Clips, home of the online check-in app. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. This is Monster Jam from Miami, Florida Marlins Park Stadium Championship Series Green. Bryce, Kenny, Scott Jordan, and Leslie Mears on the call for you as we continue Monster Jam Freestyle. Up next, the kid out of North Jackson, Ohio. It's Mr. Extreme Air 2019 Extreme Air Award winner, Corey Rummel in Megalodon. Well, I love watching Corey drive that Megalodon truck, and I love the fact that he always starts off with some really big air, but it, it's, it's still conservative enough, right? He still has to keep in mind that new 30-second rule for this year, which is you have to complete the first 30 seconds of your freestyle run, or you're not eligible for a score, but the first two jumps are huge coming out of Corey Rummel. And we've talked about the big three in this race with Max D. Grave Digger, son of a digger, Corey Rummel, Megalodon has held his own. Let's hear from Mr. Extreme Air. Basically, the high scores come down to one thing, man. It's fan judging. The fans love Megalodon. I love Megalodon, but they also love my driving style. I go out there as hard as I can for as long as I can and do as many tricks and backflips and high jumps, big airs. That's what I'm known for. I got the Extreme Air of the Award last year. I want to keep it going for this year. Tickets are on sale right now for Monster Jam World Finals 21 in Orlando, May 2nd, May 3rd. Join us at Camping World Stadium as we crown seven World Finals champions. And Corey Rummel would love to be one, getting extreme air off the step up into a slap wheelie. He's going to bring it back around again, getting caught deep in the turn. Here comes Megalodon, and he's flying it. It's showtime for Corey Rummel. Well, Corey's doing such a great job on the ground. I mean, I think he's got some of the best ground speed we've seen all night long, upsetting the truck. But here he goes, Monster Energy backflip ramp. Perfect rotation. Oh, but a twist at the very end. I thought that was going to land perfectly on that back right side. But you see a tie bar broken in the back of that Megalodon truck. That's going to end his run. 
And he got sideways on the back flip ramp. Let's take a look at the jumps. Look at the score for Corey Rummel, 8.816. Second place, getting that extreme air. He lined up the backflip, get a little sideways, couldn't quite land it, and ends up on the fin of the shark. And up next, Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, coming off three consecutive event championships. And you can argue with me, nobody has been hotter in that time frame in Monster Jam than Ryan Anderson and son of a digger. He's added two freestyle wins as well. Let's catch up with Ryan. There's a few changes that were made to this chassis that I'm still getting my hand wraps around. So the truck actually sits a little bit taller, so the center of gravity is a little bit higher. And I've always been used to my truck being really low slung, really just flat out, just doesn't matter what I do to it, it handles it. This one's been a little bit different, it's been biting me. It's been wanting to hike up when I'm not used to it, I'm not ready for it, so it's been catching me off guard. I've had to kind of tame myself down a little bit to get my hands wrapped around it, and I'm slowly climbing back up. So I've had a couple bad weekends for sure, but I am gaining speed again, I'm chasing these boys down. I gotta chase my best buddy Morgan, He's in second place, but my arch nemesis, Max Dean, Neil Elliott, is in the number one spot, and we are really battling out to get those points back. We had the lead at first. Morgan had the lead. I felt good about it. Then Neil passed us up, so I am going for it. I'm not stopping until I get that points lead back. Well, Scott, he looks really comfortable to me. I mean, getting some massive air, upsetting the truck, but the truck seems to be handling it really well from what I can tell. Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, now looking for another freestyle when he approaches the eight-pack backflip ramp, and he will land it. So Matt Pagliarulo starting to sweat a little bit, seeing those Florida dreams possibly coming to an end. What a move for Ryan Anderson. Well, how about that for the highlight reel? I mean, that should be something that shows up all week long over social media. Ryan just knows, man, hey, I'm not going to stop until this truck stops. Some excitement down there on the track as Ryan Anderson with a dynamite end to his freestyle run. He is your new leader, 9.654. No surprise there, looking for his fourth freestyle win of the 2020 season. And Cynthia Gautier, Monster Mutt Dalmatian, she's got a freestyle win under her belt this season as well. Can she put it together tonight? Well, Cynthia Gautier is definitely somebody that comes out with a lot of confidence in her ability, and, and she sh earns it as well because she knows how to find those wow moments that the fans are looking for. She's also someone that I can tell the fans want to naturally cheer for as well. And maybe it's her driving style. Maybe it's because she places plenty of gambles. But, oh, a very hard side slap there. And it's going to be interesting to see if that Monster Mutt truck survived that hit. We had some words earlier with Cynthia Gautier, Monster Mutt Dalmatian. This store is so hard. I mean, we have some of the best driver on this store, a lot of consistent drivers. So for me to be able to be to get a win or to get a victory, I mean, I need to do no mistake. I need to be on point every competition. And it's hard for me because I do a lot of little mistakes. I'm not consistent, but I'm working on it. And it's been really getting better and better every weekend. Well, obviously that truck did not survive that side slap hit with that back right tire flat, but she's making something out of a bad situation, getting a lot of attitude, getting around, hitting as many jumps as she can, even in that difficult situation. Yeah, she's going to end up having to stop it on the three tires, still able to go a little longer than most would expect. Cynthia Gautier and Monster Mutt Dalmatian, there's a nice cross thread jump there and a hard landing on the tire. It would ultimately cost the end of her freestyle run. So fifth place currently for Monster Mutt Dalmatian. This is the Monster Energy Action of the Week. I love this segment. We can take you around the globe to other events of Monster Jam for some incredible moments. And this one living up to the hype. Rosalie Raymer in Wildflower with this incredible backflip. Well, I still don't know why it twisted so bad, but look at the composure. She, she hit the brakes at the perfect time to get that roll over. And back on all four, she went up for a massive freestyle score after this. That would be a candidate for St. Jude's Save of the Night anywhere in the world. That's your Monster Energy Action of the Week. One more look at your BKT Freestyle Top 5 and another look at that incredible 8-pack backflip from Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger. That would be the difference between his run and Jester. So your leader right now is Ryan Anderson, Son of a Digger, looking for his fourth win. But up next, it's Grave Digger and last week's winner, Brodozer. Freestyle continues from Miami. It is a beautiful night in Miami 
for Monster Jam action as Stadium Championship Series Green has taken over Marlins Park. And it has been a freestyle for the ages tonight. Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, an incredible finish to his run. He maintains the top spot. But here is Morgan Kane in Grave Digger trying to creep up on Neil Elliott in the series point standings. Well, Morgan Kane, I love watching him out there. You can tell that he just enjoys so much driving a Monster Jam truck. But Morgan Kane is so good for our sport of Monster Jam. I mean, he just finished, went back and finished his degree at East Carolina University, got a degree in communications, and one of the most professional individuals in the entire sport. Let's hear from the 2016 World Finals Racing Champion Grave Diggers, Morgan Kane. I feel like that anytime you're going into a season, it's hard to perform at your best the entire season. So for me, I think my slump happened in, in Anaheim, A2, um, and I'm hoping that everything is put behind. You know, I want to make sure that this is a mental battle, and I got to make sure that mentally I'm prepared every time I go onto the track. After the first three weeks of the season, he was riding high not only in this series, but as the number one ranked driver in the power rankings. He has cooled off considerably, but one racing tonight and an event championship here would go a long way to keeping him close to Neil Elliott and Max D. Well, Morgan, oh, huge air right there from, from Grave Morgan. Digger. But Morgan Kane and Ryan Anderson are two of the best at getting around the track and kind of finding those those uh, the, those jumps that maybe some of the other drivers haven't found. Just like that, no one's hit that that uh, that pod that way, and it gives the fans a different look. And so he's got massive air, great ground speed. I mean, Looks like he's up lining up here. Flip here coming in slow is Grave Digger, but he hits it. And he is going to get pretty far in the back two tires, and he can't save it. Well, just uh, unfortunate there. Maybe a little bit too slow on the ground speed. But again, all of us are trying to kind of figure that out and find that sweet spot and, and maybe a little bit too much throttle with that slower ground speed. But an 8.848 puts him in third place. Great run from Morgan Kane. Now you hit it right there. He came in really, really slow. We don't usually see that from Morgan Kane when it comes to the backflips. That could have been the difference. So Ryan Anderson maintaining the lead with just one Monster Jam truck remaining. And it is not just your ordinary average Joe. It is last week's freestyle winner, Heavy D in Brodozer. And that is all that stands in the way of Ryan Anderson and his fourth freestyle win of the season. But some big air right off the bat for Brodozer. You know, we've got to give Heavy D credit on the fact that he continues to try to push the limits of that Brodozer truck. And there's been plenty of times when he's just gone simply over-centered, so to speak. And, and, and he kind of takes a gamble, takes a risk, and it doesn't pay off. It doesn't work out. But I've seen him be so much more controlled in that Brodozer truck, finding that sweet spot in the turbo lag, in that throttle control. And I think if anyone's up for the challenge, it's obviously Heavy D. Yeah, he was up to the challenge one week ago in San Diego with an incredible freestyle run that had everybody in Petco Park up on their feet. A well-deserved win for Heavy D and Bro Dozer. Some more big air for the diesel-powered Monster Jam truck. Heavy D, when he goes out, there's no rhyme or reason. There's not much of a strategy. He just goes out to have fun and wow this crowd and see what he can jump over as he gets off the oh, side no. of the ramp, and he is not going to save it. It looks like that maybe that front locker came unlocked, but you remember, this is a much heavier truck, too. It's about 15,000 pounds, but that original super glue glue to the action replay shows us that the truck's landing extremely well. It's absorbing what Heavy D is throwing at it but a 6.764 puts him in 11th place. I know that'll probably end his night in a frustrating way, but ultimately it was Ryan Anderson coming out on top, getting that last 14 points of the night. Incredible score, 9.654. Matt Pagliarulo and Jester is going to finish in second. There's your freestyle point standings. Let's go down to the track with Leslie and Ryan Anderson. So Ryan, for you tonight, for the first time ever, you hit the eight pack backflip ramp and you're able to moonwalk. How is that even possible? You know what? The only reason it was possible because each and every one of you fans supported my dad for so many years. You made Grave Digger what it is and now you made Son of a Digger and I did it all for you guys. Each and every single one of you fans come out here and you spend your hard earned money on those seats, the tickets, the t-shirts, the hats. I see it all and that's why I do what I do. I do it for you fans. We got this win tonight together. Me and you, every single one of you fans, I did it for you all. So I can't thank you enough, Miami. You guys rock. 14 points, not quite enough to win the event championship. That honor will go to Morgan Kane in Grave Digger. This is his third event championship of the season, but he only gets two points on Neil Elliott, but every point matters. Let's go back down to Leslie with our event champion, Grave Digger's Morgan Kane.
Morgan, you were coming off a little bit of what you would like to call a slump, and you said this was the weekend that you had to get back in the groove, and I think that this overall championship is just what your team needs. This is exactly what we needed right here. Parker, that's for you, buddy. You work your butt off day in and day out to keep Gravedigger 33 ready to go all the time, and especially all the fans that come to support us. I haven't been back here since 2011, which was my rookie season, and I got so much love from everybody. There was all these throwback pictures, so I knew that this week weekend here in Miami, it's our weekend and we're going to run as hard as we can. It doesn't matter if we're staying up all night to fix the trucks. That's what it's about. We go back to earlier in freestyle for the St. Jude save of the night. While Matt Pack Marulo's out here saving the Jester Monster Jam truck, we're giving all the Monster Jam community a chance to save lives. Get out your phone, text Monster Jam to 785-833 to donate now. Coming into tonight, Morgan Kane had cooled off quite a bit. He needed this one badly. He got it, your event champion, Gravedigger. Well, it's crunch time right now. I mean, we're heading towards the back end of the season. All the drivers are starting to feel that pressure. Morgan Kane stepped up to the plate, hit it out of the park. The bullseye remains on the back of Max D's Neil Elliott. One of these superstars will head to Orlando to compete for World Championships at World Finals 21 Camping World Stadium. We want to see you there. Get your tickets right now at MonsterJam.com. For Bryce Kenny and Leslie Mears, I'm Scott Jordan. Good night from Marlins Park.